Hello everybody. Chapter 7, Forgiveness. Before we go any further, I want to repeat what I had said earlier in this study. If I teach anything that doesn't conform to God's word, throw it out. God expects each of us to, show, to study and show ourselves as approved workmen. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 I'm accountable to teach truth. You're accountable to verify my teaching by comparing it to the Bible. But when you see that our teaching conforms to the Word, you are also accountable to receive and apply it to your walk in the Spirit. Is that fair? Throughout this book we have discussed forgiveness many times, but is such an important issue I want to cover it one more time. Satan tries to deceive us in many ways. Ask yourself, yourself these questions. Do you know in your heart that you are saved? If you are sure of your salvation, have you ever sinned since coming to Christ? If you have ever sinned since you were saved, do you believe that if you ask God to forgive you, He will? Do you believe that He can and will forgive my sin? Do you know that God has set conditions on forgiveness? Do you know that under certain circumstances, God will not forgive because His holiness prevents Him from doing so? Our past, present, and future sin are not automatically forgiven. There are two conditions that Christians must meet to receive forgiveness. First, we must forgive others. And second, we must ask God to forgive us. The first condition for receiving forgiveness. Matthew 6, verse 9 to 12 says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What does verse 12 say? God says that we are to ask the Father to forgive us our sins, when or in the same way we forgive those that have sinned against us. Do you really want to ask God to forgive you in the same way that you forgive others? God gave us a requirement to fulfill before He will forgive our sins. Our forgiveness is directly tied to our forgiving others. It's profound, it's profound that this verse doesn't say that God will always forgive us. Matthew 6 verse 14 to 15 makes the above statement from the Lord's Prayer very plain. For if ye men forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive your trespasses. The manner or way that we forgive others set the standard by which God will forgive us if we do not forgive or in other words judge others we will be judged by God in the same way the second condition for receiving forgiveness we must confess all of our known sins past present and future first John 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Notice that this verse begins with an if. It is critical that we pay attention to the ifs, buts, and thens in Scripture. James 5 verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What happens if we do not confess our sins and forgive ourselves? 
We are not forgiven, and the guilt, shame, anger, regret, sadness, hatred, bitterness, etc., is still in the memory and in our lives. If we harbor unforgiveness against anyone, including against ourselves, God will not, even cannot, forgive our sins. Does that trouble you? Let me see if I can make it even more troubling. While doing ministry, I met a lady with whom I have spent a lot of time. Raised in a Satanist home, she grew up dedicated to Satan. Her parents baptized with blood and urine, and they repeatedly molested her. So did others. She became pregnant and was forced to have abortions as early as high school. She participated in the ritualistic murder of little babies and developed several personalities as defense mechanisms in her vain attempt to save herself. Assuming a different personality helped her avoid pain for a time, but in reality it was protecting her from the love and deliverance of Jesus. We talked about forgiveness, and I told her that she must forgive her father. She couldn't, and as awful as he had been toward her, I agreed with her. I wanted to stake him out on a hill of red army ants. No punishment seemed too harsh. But who actually was hurt by her unforgiveness? Her father? Not directly, but her husband, children, and herself. To receive God's forgiveness and the blessing of healing, she had to start with forgiving her father. If you have ever forgiven someone, yet the pain of your anger or resentment still persists, the bitterness is still there. Either you did not really forgive, or, at a later time, you fell back into the bitterness. Either way, you have allowed a root of bitterness to take hold, and it prevents you from receiving God's forgiveness. Do you think that Satan knows what the Bible says? Absolutely. He knows that forgiveness is conditional on our obedience to God's laws. Why do you think it is so hard to forgive others, and especially hard to forgive ourselves? Satan fights this with all of his might because he knows that we are set free from him when we forgive others and repent of our sins. If you bury a root of bitterness, what does it do? It, go, it grows. Satan's demons water and fertilize it so that it will continue to grow. Our lives become so filled with pain that we believe we are unable to forgive. This is Satan's favorite weapon, the ability to forgive one, the inability to forgive. This is Satan's favorite weapon, I'm repeating this again, the inability to forgive. One woman dealt with her mother's constant harangues by saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She said it so often and so effectively that each time she repeated, I'm sorry, she became more bitter. There was no plea for or acceptance of forgiveness, nor did her mother give her any. I'm sorry served only as an attempt to bury her pain. We have all been hurt. The church is filled with the walking wounded, so medicated with a forgiveness that is really denial, that the root of bitterness destroys us from within, instead of an outpouring of the power of forgiveness, we see Satan outpouring fire on our differences. And I'll be right back with part two.